there guys. So today is kind of a special day. We're back out here in the North Shoe Swap, the lovely North Shoe Swap, which I love so much. And today I'm going to take you to a secret place. So you guys are used to seeing where Magda Bay, Englemont. Well, we're going to continue down the road, down to the very, very end. And there's a really, really cool place down there. It's called Silver Beach. It's like the Mexico of the Shoe Swap. So the road sucks getting in there and there's a really beautiful um, waterfall we're gonna stop at, at Albus Provincial Waterfall. We're gonna do a little bit of swimming there and then we'll continue on to Silver Beach. They don't have, even have power down there. It's a generator that comes on once a day to click on for everybody to have power. So it's kind of remote and my understanding is the locals want it that way. They don't want to pave the road down there because they don't want more people down there. So. We're going to take you guys down there and I'll show you exactly what it looks like and go from there. Weather today, it's about 25 Celsius. It's fairly warm. It's not humid, so it's it feels like it is. So it's beautiful out here. Blue skies, just so nice. We stopped here for gas. Before we go off road and get to the end of the road where nobody is. So Ross Creek Provincial, Ross Creek Country Store is the kind of the last one, and then continue down, and it gets the dirt, ugly road. So let's continue on with the venture. DJ, can you please roll that intro? Hey everybody, my name is Andrew Avley. After a workplace accident, I was left as a bump knee amputee. I had a decision to make. Get busy living or get busy dying. Obviously, you only have one life, so I made a decision to get busy living, exploring every opportunity that is presented to me. Tune in every week for different adventures, both from accessibility standpoint to adventures with my family and friends. And every adventure begins with one leg at a time. Nothing like a good ice cream on a hot day. Kenzie loves Ross Creek ice cream, it's the best. Well, hey there, guys. So, right there. See if I can zoom into it. Right there is where the pavement ends. And from here on in, it's gravel, gravel, gravel. So the road really, really, really sucks. It's not just a gravel road, it's full of washboards and it actually continues up to Sun Peaks at one point. I'll put a map up here in the blue bloop down below, but it's a nasty road, so that's why we're not bringing Grover. Grover would be way better on gas, way better for filming, but on gravel, it knocks the sensors out, so then it won't open the doors. So we're in my wife's car, my wife's Toyota Venza, and we're going down here. So I got the time lapse going, but the road really 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 sucks so we'll see how it turns out it's kind of nice there has been a little bit of rain so um, it should not be as dusty but we'll see so let's continue on Hey there guys, so we're on the road here. Funny story, well, not really funny, but during the fires last year, this was the road out that they had to take all the way to the other side of the Shishwa, because the other side of this road going out was where the fire was. So the paved way out was where the fire was, so all the locals had to go down this road, which is, it's a brutal road. It's just, it's 
it's not kept up. It's lots of washboards. Um, today is not as dusty, thank God, but currently it's really, really dusty too. You can just see what it's like. I don't think the camera will show justice, but there is tons and tons of washboards. Lots of places where you can pop a tire easily. And on the side there, it's straight down to the water. So, hence why nobody's built along here. But where Silver Beach is a huge flat area, so that's where people are building, but they don't want to pave this road because then it will fill in too much with people. So really cool. I've been wanting to go out here for probably two years now and just kind of pick the day and today's the day. So I think it was 30 kilometers in on this road. The first stop on this road would be this place here. And this is called Albus for Provincial Park. Now it's a pretty cool place as um, you can camp and they got some wicked waterfalls. So hopefully I can get in there with Lieutenant. And then you've also got the swimming in the Shishwap. So it's awesome. Um, the road getting in, it's probably better than I remember, but not by much. There's some sections where the potholes could suck up your car pretty quick. Um, there was that car burnt out and then that truck broken down. But it's still better than I remember. So I think last year with the forest fires, they really kind of worked on it and kind of packed it down. So it's, it's manageable now. So let's get on Lieutenant and head in. That's the road in. I also noticed here, it's pretty cool, you can see. I was having a pee and I looked over and you can tell that the bears haven't started their, their winter prep yet or that wouldn't be there. Quite a bit of the berries throughout the forest here. So cool. I love this area. But it's so remote getting in. Like the road kind of sucks. I couldn't bring the van in here at all. But the car did okay. So I'm going to send Rudy up. And then I'm going to send Lieutenant in. And we're going to bike in. I think it might be the world record, the first guy in a wheelchair to head into Elvis Provincial on a wheelchair. <laughs> it's honestly, the road's not that bad. It's like this road here is not that bad. You guys put them dangling with you. So lots of ferns on the side. It's very moist. That's a word for you. Moist out here. Almost like a rainforest. So there's lots of moss covered. Not only Vancouver Island, but where we were going through on our last, sorry, our last adventure through Othello Tunnel. Sorry if I can spell it out. just start to hear the waterfall now it's quite a it's quite a big waterfall so it's not just the tiny tiny
beautiful. All these old growth trees and just the green, the nature, just stunning. That shows you how bumpy the road is, that truck coming up. You can see it kind of flexing van life to get up here. Right on, brother. What may you be doing? This section? Come on, good. Hey, Lieutenant, we can go anywhere. I got my van life, but you high five? I can, get, I can get down here. I just got to take my time. Nothing to see here. A guy in a wheelchair and a girl carrying a leg. Nothing to see here. <laughs> There's the beautiful Miss Kenzie carrying my leg and a guy in a wheelchair. What could go wrong? <laughs> now, I don't know if I can get in the falls with the lieutenant, so I might have to try walking or I'm going to send the, the drone up. So people leaving after seeing the falls? Kenzie Karen Lake, nothing to see here. My wife's just gonna move down. I don't think I can make it down with my leg. Um, I didn't bring my military leg because I'm getting a new socket made, so this is my swimming leg. So I don't know if I could make it down just this first part here. My, my swimming leg doesn't bend, it doesn't give me hydraulics, so it just gives me bang in and out, so. I'll that, take so Kenzie's going to take you down there and show you and then hopefully she shows you the the map over there. Okie dokie. Let's go. We are doing the main crocs. The best kind of crocs, the slip on crocs. I don't like the little flippy crocs. Here's our map. This trail has some steep rough sections with sharp drop offs. The crocs can do that. Right, Daddy? The Crocs can do it. They can make Crocs. They can make the steep drop-offs. Off-road Crocs. Yeah, they can make it. Sport mode and gate. Well, they don't sport mode, but they're cool Crocs. Okay, let's go. You can hear the waterfalls right here. It feels very rocky and like pebbly. There's my shadow right there. Yeah, my nice little shadow. It's very like enclosed and like mossy so you can see there's tons of moss trees falling down you can hear the waterfall very loud it's not like a little rustle in the woods it's very loud and proud you look up look at all those trees big rock oh I think we're coming up to this small memorial. And you can see the falls. Very rocky. The fence is holding in. No, not right now. Unfortunately, these falls are very unforgiving for people and very luring for people wanting to swim in the falls and tempt Mother Nature. There's been many, many, many deaths, unfortunately, at the falls. And the plaque here marks the, I think, one of the first people to die. And with some kids deciding to swim in the falls. It's really, really sad. But you really got to respect Mother Nature and respect the boundaries. And, you know, yes, it'd be great to swim in the falls and, and experience that adventure. But is it worth it at your life? I don't think so. But... It's extremely sad every time we go to the falls we always read this plaque about the poor kids that have lost their lives in 1984. There's the memorial. Beauty and the danger.
there. Mm -hmm. Chat with me. Sorry for the chatter, but rocks down there, flowers. And then there's the beautiful falls right there. I see it, but down in there. Picture time. There's. If you look down over here. It's kind of hard to show you because the sun is kind of bright glaring into it. But there's some no longer by our side, Todd, forever in our hearts. Rock right there, which I'm guessing someone made for it. You can go without me and I'll come back to the car. And there's more more. Go! You can see it's fairly steep getting down here and you just gotta take your time, but it's not it's not terrible, like it's just nature, right? You just gotta take your time and not be in a rush. So what do you guys think of the falls? It's pretty cool. It's even better in the spring when the runoff's happening, so it's just raging. But this time of year, almost the end of summer, so you know, obviously water's at a premium and it's not running as much. Still running pretty good, but not as much. Yeah. So camping wise, I think there's probably I'm gonna say 30 sites here. I'll put it in the in the in the script below, but it's not that many. Ooh. This section might be a little tough. Just take your time. So the campsite itself probably has 30 sites. Unfortunately, they're super hard to get into as they're just super busy. They don't fit very big trailers, so it's more of a, tra a truck camper kind of thing or a short trailer or, of course, tent or boat camping. The fees are collected from boat access, so they come to the shore and they go around to each site and collect the, the money for the for the camping for the provincial government so it's a pretty awesome place to see you can see the, st the sand is just spectacular and it really is a beautiful place if you guys are ever in the north shushua i recommend going to see more arm just get ready for that terrible drive in is you know the washboards really really suck <laughs> so let's get back Steady is the race. Miss the dirt bikes. I used to have more. I said the TTR story, but I used to have a WR also. And I love that dirt bike. It was a four stroke. It was a go. It just. Rah! But after I had my accident, I didn't think I'd ever ride again. So I sold it. I'm kind of kicking myself because nowadays you can, you can fix them up. So obviously without a right leg, you can still um it's called a recluse clutch so you don't have to shift gears and you can also put your rear brake on handlebars so it's definitely you could definitely do it and i miss it but shoulda coulda woulda it, it was an old bike anyways if i got back into it i'd probably get something a lot lighter there was a steel frame so but man i just love getting out after a work week and going riding with the boys and Ride somewhere, have a hot apple pie and a beer, and oh, just incredible. So 
uh, made it down the steep section. And then this is where, if you want to hike to the falls, this is where you go. So you can start here and then hike in. I'm going to pull over for a car to go by, but you can park down there and then hike in the falls. You know, one thing about, oh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that. Just a little salamander running across. I think it's a salamander. Hey, guy, I'm not going to hurt you, bud. Just a little guy. I love how everybody in the bush is, is usually pretty friendly. There's not, as long as you're in a good area, like you're not up, like out here. There used to be a lot of grow ups, so a lot of people growing marijuana, so you don't want to get in those areas. But nowadays, now that marijuana is legal in Canada, it's not really a big deal out here. And everybody's usually so friendly. Again, as long as you're not on private property or, you know, abusing the land. But. Just, you might be saying, well, Andrew, why didn't you get in the car and just go down in the car? You could have done the same thing in your car. You don't get the air. You don't get the full feeling of in the car. You just, this thing just, I feel like I'm more with nature, you know, getting on the, the tri ride. Just enjoying nature. Going down the path and experiencing it. And the smells are just dead. I don't know, I've been mulling over doing a camping trip. Sorry guys. I've been mulling over doing a camping trip with Shrek and doing a, coming to a place like this and setting up a hammock and just kind of having a little camping trip without the trailer or anything and just cooking a steak on the fire and just enjoying life. Not sure if that's something you guys would be interested in or not, but take you guys around, show you the campground. I'll just go down and tell the girls that I'm here and then go down to the campground. They might be swimming already, I don't know. Let's see how many people are camping down here today. Now it says no fires, but as of Wednesday, there is fires. They took the fire band off, which as much as I'm for fires, like I love having a fire and a hot dog roast, I don't think they should have shut the band off. It's just more risk, you know? I don't want to see, nobody wants to see the bush burning. So guys, I hate to do this to you, but I'm going to have to do this in a two-part series. I really didn't realize how much information there was to do with the falls. And then there's a ton of information to do with Silver Beach or, you know, I, I like to call it the Mexico of the shoe swap. If I skipped over either one of them, I, I feel that I wouldn't be doing it justice. Albus Falls is a beautiful, magical place. And you can see the campgrounds just beautiful you're you're camping right along the lake and i really didn't want to skip that over and just kind of breeze by it so i'm going to do it as a two-part series i promise the next video will be going into the mexico of the shoe swap and show you guys exactly what it looks like i hope you guys enjoyed this journey it was a little bit difficult because the roads were so rough getting in here and then trying to capture everything and then of course i'm not allowed to fly rudy in the provincial park so i had to go back on the road and then launch him and then get over top of the provincial park in order to get some of the shots i got so which took a lot of time so i hope you guys appreciate it if you guys did like it and you thought it was well with your time which you know i really appreciate everybody's time then consider hitting that like button and subscribe button if not then i just appreciate you watching it Thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next one, part two, going to Silver Beach. And remember, do it one leg at a time.